In the last video, we talked a lot about our choice of radiator, our choice of cases, and why I'm doing all what I'm doing here. And something we have not talked about is actually components. So, uh, as a quick reminder, a lot of radiators, and I mean a lot of radiators, and the Kula Master Master Frame 700. Very easy, very, very understandable. Now, the issue is how are we going to get heat into the radiator? Now, obviously, people are going to say, take, I don't know, 3900K, ramp it all up, and then give it a go. The problem with that is, I chose to go for single fan radiators. And I do believe that makes the most amount of sense in the, in the sense of that I need to spend the least amount of time and money to get the same result. Because it's not going to change anything if I compare a 240 red with two 120 millimeter fans on there, or just a 120 red with one fan. The, the end result, the ratio between different fans are, is going to be the same. It's just the absolute number that will go down because of the bigger radiator, which does make sense, but for the ra ratio between fan A and fan B, it's exactly the same thing. So there is just no reason why I need to do that. I'm just not going to do that. But this also means that we are limited in the amount of maximum heat that we can push into it before everything will just thermal throttle. Which is also the reason why it doesn't make any sense to take the biggest giant GPU that I can find and push 300 watts into a 120 or 140 millimeter radiator. That would just kill the whole system. So what makes a lot more sense is to limit the amount of, of radiator size from 240 to 120, limit the amount of fans that I need to use and limit the amount of power that I need to put into those to get an accurate result. And at the same and doing this at the very same time gives me the option to take older systems which I do not need anymore and not waste a perfectly fine 13700, 13900K, just for a testing station, because again, this is a, a permanent station. Once everything is put together, I will not take it apart anymore. It is going to stay the way that it is for the next years. So I, I need to be very cautious with what I'm slapping into there. And I came up with a few things that nobody is going to like. This is the main board. Yeah, it's, it's very cute, but you need to keep in mind it's a benchmark station for radiator fans. So having a giant ATX motherboard with a lot of features just doesn't give me anything. All it needs to do is survive. That's really everything. And therefore I need a Z motherboard so I can do whatever the heck I want. And I need a CPU. For the CPU, it's it's actually quite easy. We are going with a 11, 7, uh, 10, sorry, we are going with a 10700K. Uh, the reason as to why is because I can push it up to 200 and something watts without the problem. But I suspect, because I need to, to adapt it to the smallest radiator, which is going to be, I think, the 20 millimeter 140. Uh, model. That's, I think, the, the least amount of cooling power that I will achieve and I need to adapt to that one. So the whole testing station needs to survive using that radiator. So it's just, I cannot push 250 watts through it. I, right now, I'm just assuming that we are going to settle probably around 150 watts. I think like 150 watts package power is exactly where we need to be in all, and, and then every radiator will fit into the whole benchmark. Because yeah, we are going to settle for exactly one number, the, everything will be locked in BIOS and then just full blast and different radiators. And let's be honest, something like this is going to be enough. Now the only thing that I'm a bit worried about is VRM. Like there is just not a lot <laughs> and that, that, that doesn't give me the best feeling. Uh, however, I have used this motherboard for very, very long and I, I think it's going to be fine and I don't need it. That, that's, that's the point. I don't need it anymore. If everything fails, if the CPU doesn't produce enough heat or if anything is unstable here and, and, and this board cannot maintain, let's say 150, 160, 170, how, however much we are going to need, if this whole thing doesn't work, I can quickly change it out for something more permanent, which is um, for something bigger, which is probably going to be a, a 13700K because I, I know that this one will work. 
I can do that very quickly and we will get in a minute to why I can do that very quickly. Now for the RAM, a stick of G-Skill Aegis 3000, 16 gig. Why? Because I don't need it. <laughs> it's, it's really that simple. Uh, probably too because it's actually a uh, dual system. Somewhere is a second one and I'm going to, to take two of those. For the SSD, a VD green because it has 128 gigs or 120, 120 gigs and I don't need it. It's, it's really that simple. Now for, the CP, now for the GPU, you still need a GPU. I could run on the iGPU, which would work perfectly fine, but I don't want to do that because it, um, A, it is horrible for benchmarking because once I, I push the system to the limit, things like hardware monitor will start to stutter. Uh, and that's a problem for reading. That's why I, I need to have some sort of, of GPU, but I need really the least amount of, of GPU. It's, it's a display adapter. I need a display adapter. And believe it or not, but the ASUS GT710 is perfect for that job. It is convenient for multitask processing. It's, it's convenient. And what's more convenient about it is the fact that it doesn't have a fan. It is... This is perfect. It, it has an HDMI, a DVI, and uh, a older VGA port. Perfect. I, it, it just needs to be a display adapter, nothing more. And uh, this is actually from our old uh, CPU cooler benchmark station, uh, which also has been disassembled now because we are upgrading it to a 3900K, so uh, this is not needed there anymore. And we are switching things around, and this one found a new home in our radiator fan benchmark station. Oh, and of course, a, a random power supply. Uh, the only thing I needed it to do is being full, fully modular because I don't need GPU power. I don't need a uh, second 8-pin for the CPU. Uh, the only two things I really need is motherboard and one 8-pin for the CPU. And then, maybe or maybe not, I will need some Molex and SATA for the whole water cooling loop thing. But I really tr am trying to keep cabling on a minimum and this is like 650 watts and I don't really need the, the PSU anymore. And I could have also go for a 450, 400 watts because the whole system will just not use more than 400 watts. It will use probably less than 300 all the time. It's, <laughs> it's, it's really a, uh, a small system with, with this GPU. Now for... The water block. That's going to be a very, very important point. Um, in theory, the whole system will depend heavily on said water block. But just in theory, because we are going to use the same water block for every fan that we test, so we can pretty much eliminate that one from the equation. Uh, after a, a given period, the water will have the same temperature, everything will equalize, so uh, it really doesn't matter. However, I really wanted to use the Bitspower Summit M Pro. Now this is a thing that they sent us long, a long time ago and I never came to use it, but it is big and I think it's going to do a good job in this testing station. Plus it's black, so it's stealth and I like stealth. It, it, it is not shining, it is not looking weird, it is the Summit M Pro. This is going to be fine. Now we have another question open, uh, and that's one that I'm going to decide while I am building. Initially, I wanted to buy a new reservoir for the whole thing. The problem is uh, budget cuts. Now, if you have seen the amount of radiators that I just bought for a single video series, if you want to call it that way, um, is incredible. Yeah, the whole project is very, very expensive, so I needed to do some budget cuts. Uh, so no new pump, no new reservoir. And the two reservoirs that I have is one very small Vero one and one gigantic Alpha Cool one, which uh, was very, very, very originally on my own personal rig at home. Now, the problem with these two things, um, I think you can already see it, this one is kind of too small and this one is kind of too big. Because my, my initial idea was to have it like half as high, 
because you have this one from Alpha Pool in different sizes. And I wanted to take a, um, a one that is half as high and then take some tape and at a very specific point uh, put some tape around it so that I am, can be 100% sure all the time that there is the same amount of water 24 7 always every time i do a benchmark of a fan i will keep an eye on on the on the water level and then i am going to know okay we have the same amount of water we can start testing it and especially in this one it's going it would have been so easy because it's very visible you can have the tape around and it works and this one also has another very very important um plus and that is that i can just unscrew the top and then fill it from the top, which works amazingly well. Of course, only if you do not use the top ports to uh, to get the water back into the reservoir. But you have in the bottom, you have an in and out. You can do everything in the bottom, and this would have worked flawlessly. However, it is freaking giant. Just imagine having this one plus feet just standing like that. And I am not so sure. Yeah, this one was greater at some point oh this one is not really needed anyhow this would have been perfect if it would have been smaller but i just don't have any contact to alpha cool to get one like for review purposes and i just cannot buy more stuff at, at some point i need to stop um, on the other hand we have this barrel one which is ridiculously small and the positive aspect about this one is a that it is small af B, that we have uh, like a little dial with which we can uh, adjust the pump speed and C, it does not require a lot of um, liquid to, to run. Uh, with this one I can just say okay it's going to be full all the time but at the same time this does create the issue of not being fillable easily. I, I need then to take something and then pure it in and then it's going to be a mess every time I do it whereas with this one it's just going to be amazingly easy plus this pump is amazingly good it is a lot quicker and pushes a lot more compared to this one but i'm just unsure as to now uh which one i will use i think this is going to be determined really during the build now one question that may or may not be still open in all of this is that i'm not going to build a loop where we have the the water block going into the reservoir pump and then going into radiator one radiator two radiator three and so on and so on and so on of course i'm not going to do that a that would be an amazing system amazing cooling also without a fan but uh, it would insert numerous variables and that doesn't make any sense so we are going to test each radiator individually now you can really see where this is going we are we need a lot of quick connects we need to have every radiator prepared with tubes and then quick connect from one radiator to the other one and so on and so forth so basically what we are going to do is have two tubes which are uh, loose coming probably the in port from the cpu block and the out port from the pump and those two are then going to connect to a radiator and then after the the benchmark number one disconnect them connect radiator number two move the fan and move on and do one after the other after the other um, i have never worked with quick connects and I don't know if every time you loosen them or every time you take them apart, if you are losing like a droplet of water. And that's also the reason why I really wanted to go with the Alpha Cool one, because in case you lose a drop of water, after some time I need to refill the system and it's a lot easier to refill it in there. So uh, I don't know that. And I don't know how many times I can quickly disconnect those quick disconnect connections uh, before they will just die. Because we have reviewed what like 40 fans which means that i need to redo the benchmarks for now 40 fans we have uh i would say 10 fans waiting to be reviewed which you can add on that so let's say 50 fans in total and we need to test every of those fans on three different radiators so the quick connects from the the water block and the reservoir will already now be used at least 150 times in the span of the next week 
I have no clue how many disconnects a quick disconnect can survive, but uh, I hope it's a lot. Now, given our budget cut, I needed to settle for a few things. For example, we cannot or could not go for the thickest tube, the thickest fitting, the thickest here, thickest there. But the positive aspect about all of this is that we do not need it. And we do not need it because it is going to equalize after a certain amount of time anyway. And the thinner it is, the longer it will take or not longer, depends on how you look at it, but uh, it, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, not if we keep it consistent across everything. So we have those, uh, are those the quick connects or the screws? Oh, for cool. Here are the quick release connectors. Um, those are very thin ones, but they do not cost a lot. And those are the, the plastic models. I have no clue how to disassemble this. One eternity later. Oh, okay. It has it has like a secondary lock to it. Okay, so first I I need to press it in and then I need to screw the whole thing in. Okay, makes 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 sense. It's not as easy as uh, the metal ones where you just... That seems to be a different system here, but given the price difference and the fact that I needed 1, 2, two 4, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 16 in total, we are going to be fine even if... I need to do two different steps every time I want to change them. This is going to be fine. Then for the, for the tube, as I said, it's going to be a very thin one, but it's one that fits with this fitting, uh, with this quick release thing here. Um, measure twice, cut to size, attach to fitting, cool your loop. Alpha cool core, soft tubes. Okay, uh, this is a 11 by eight, one meter uh, in, in a box, one meter here, one meter there. And this one I already cut for some reason. I think I needed it to uh, take the water out of my uh, working PC at some point. But I still have the tube, we will use it because we need a lot of tube for this whole project. So we have, in total, we have two meters and I hope it's enough. Uh, I think it's enough. I mean, per radiator, let's say we're going to use this. So, one red, two reds, three reds. I'm going to order more. <clears throat> but they are coming quickly, so I, I will order more today because uh, until we are at the point, this, it's going to take a few days until we are there. Then the last thing that's going to go in all of this is liquid. It's... Um, a coolant liquid which is going to be alpha cool crystal green why crystal green because why the hell not it was the cheapest they had another idea i had for going with a very very um how should i say um a very seeable color is because in case i need to fill the red bag up and i have it measured out with a tape i need to see exactly where I am and if you take for example a, a see-through, a, a transparent liquid, then it's going to be a lot harder and with this one it's going to create a very very strong contrast so it's going to be easy for me to see, easy for me to fill up and that's going to be it. <sighs> for today this is going to be it, a lot of talking, too much talking but in the next video we will finally get to building, we will slap the Bits Power Summit Pro on top of the 10700K, slap the RAM in, slap the SSD in, mount the whole thing down, we will mount all of the radiators down, the GPU, and then, yeah, we will see how far we will come. Maybe we will start filling the loop, maybe not, maybe that's for video number three, or video number four, but until then, I believe we'll have the tubes, that should work fine, and then we can finish the whole thing. Okay, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.